U.S. in the FIFA U-20 World Cup where he recorded a goal and three assists. Diego Luna has been on fire for his club as well as Real Salt Lake continue to make their way up the Western Conference standings. And right now we are absolutely thrilled to welcome in the man himself, Diego Luna. Wait, you look like you're in an airport, <laughs> sir. Where are you traveling? Yeah, I'm heading back to El Paso for a couple of days off, but yeah. I love it. A man wow. on the go. Uh, well, we appreciate you taking the time to, to join us today on Morning Footy. Um, hey, let's let's talk about your recent form lately, because it feels like since your performance at that U-20 World Cup, you have been balling out, just playing with so much confidence, getting regular minutes. Um, what's been the difference for you? I think I've... I've gained the, the confidence that was needed since making my switch from, from USL to MLS. And I think it was about all about a lot of uh, mentally. I think that was the biggest thing for me, the mental switch and the mental aspect of going back on track. But I'm glad that the U-20 World Cup helped me with that. And um, coming back here and getting the minutes and stuff, I think it was positive and it was my work and showing what I can do on the field. Diego, you got three goals and three assists. You've started seven games this season. How, how, how important was that brace at St. Louis? Uh, I mean, at Red Bull, uh, against Red Bulls, you had, a bra you had two assists at St. Louis and a goal. What, what, has, what have you seen with, with your development in the game? Yeah, I think to be honest, it, it's just confidence. It was just confidence in me playing a game of three one that I know I had, but I think it was just lost in a lot of stuff mentally and just my confidence wasn't there. So I think it was an optimist confidence that I needed. And um, that, that shows what, what I can do. And I'm continuing to, to be confident in my play and things will happen. Diego, I want to know, the first time I saw your photo, I thought, this guy can't possibly be in the U-20 World Cup. You, you know you photograph a little bit older than you really are. <laughs> I want to know, what, what age do most people think you are when they first meet you? Yeah, people, I've gotten like 23, 24, especially since all the tattoos, like, this is not really a best 19. And I think this is also because I don't really care myself, like, I carry myself, you know, pretty mature and not so serious, so I think it's just how I carry myself and how I talk and stuff like that. But yeah, 24. You got, a, you got a baby face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, yeah. what do you mean you think Under the old. facial hair, you uh, know what I mean? I don't know about you that. You got stress lines on the eyes, dog. I mean, playing professionally is not easy, but you're getting a ton of minutes, and that's incredible. Thank you all for saying. With, with your style, because I think your profile is much different than a number of the other attackers in, in the under-20 age group, what, where do you see yourself in the future? What position? Are you a, are you a 10? Are you a false 9? Are you an inverted winger? Or are you just a box-to-box? -box? Like, where do you see yourself on the pitch? Yeah, I think with all the, the positions I've been playing with the U20s and also with the RSL, you know, played in the World Cup as a, as a nine, right? And then I can't come back and play as a left wing for, for RSL. But also my main position, I'd say, is a, is a 10. And I like to get that three wall as a 10 and create things. That's what I do. So I think 10 is, is where I'd like to continue my career. But of course, playing in these different positions is helping me grow as a player no matter what, understanding, you know, when, when I get to play as that 10, knowing where the left wing and where the nines are will be so I think overall it's just helping me grow as a, as a player. Diego I want to ask about just the the overall experience that you had down in Argentina for that U20 World Cup what was it like being down there what were you and your teammates up to during your downtime um, what are your best memories from that tournament. Yeah a lot of messing around and just be hanging out and creating you know friendships that are going to be lifetime you know friendships and, and bonds that we have so I think that was pretty cool and I, I like to say that the World Cup was very special because it was a very enjoyable time. It wasn't just there for soccer and, and all business. It was, um, we, we had a good time and the guys got together really well and the chemistry was, was good and the vibe was good. So it was an enjoyable time overall. And, and the soccer aspect was really good as well. So that was a, a good thing. Diego, you've, you've obviously chosen to play for the U.S., I'm very happy about that, but you come from a, a Mexican household. Your parents are both Mexican immigrants. Was it a tough decision? We've seen a lot of dual nationals kind of, you know, have a, a difficulty making that decision. Talk a little bit about yourself and making that decision to play for the U.S. 
Yeah, I think it's it's just the U.S. has given me the opportunity. I think the U.S. is where I grew up and where what has given me the you know the chance to play soccer for for all the clubs that I've played here. So I think it's it's a an easy decision for me. I think I grew up in the U.S. and and lived here my whole life, and this is who I want to represent and play for. Well, you have a unique style when you play, and I love the way you get on the ball and you, you drive at opponents. You you're calm in possession. Was there a favorite player of yours that you try to imitate? Is, do you have a, a player that you idolize? Yeah, so I I watched a lot of Marco Royce when I was younger, and that was just somebody who who I thought had a little bit of that swag that that I kind of liked and, and kind of fell for. But I think overall, I've kind of just picked up on a bunch of different players, and just my style is kind of. I used to play futsal a lot, so a lot of technical and and, and good with the ball and being calm in, in tight spaces. So I think it's a lot of it's just stuff that I picked up on my own and stuff that's already that's just in me. And I think it's, um, yeah, I'm blessed to have it like that. But I think Marco Royce would be would be one player. Diego, I want to ask about your coach, Pablo Mastruini, because it seems like every time this man is in charge of a team, his players would run through a brick wall for them. And I feel like it shows with this RSL team. You guys are so tough to beat. Even when you go down in matches, never count you guys out because you find your way to fight back in. And it's, it's resulted in an incredible run of form for you guys. What has Pablo brought to this team as as a coach and what have you learned from him personally yeah i think for me that's one of the biggest things that that he's brought to me is the the work rate on the field but the defensive aspect of the game knowing that how much a, the the defense can create chances and how much that helps teams win but we've ha we've grown this underdog mentality here at Arsenal, and it's kind of built into our dna now where no matter what even if the ball is not you know not working for us on that day we're going to bring the, the workhorse mentality and we're going to grind it out no matter what. So that's something that we can always control. But, of course, on the ball, we have a, a lot of quality on the team and, and we, we express ourselves. And I think that's what's, what's been helping us a lot. But I think the defensive work is, is why we're so difficult to play against away and home. Diego, a number of, of teams would look at RSL and say, ah, not good enough. We're not, we're not scared to play RSL. Maybe chalk it up as three points. Now with you, Saverino, Chicho Arango, Krylak, you guys have a squad. Do you feel that you're getting the respect that you deserve now? Yeah, I think teams should be scared, but I think it's it's all for us to, to just go into every game the same way that, that we've been going in, no matter what, League's Cup, or Open Cup, and a home and away games in League. I think it's just us doing our thing and letting our quality show on the field. We like to go in as the underdogs and then, and then let our quality show when we get the ball. Like you said, those players you mentioned, just top ballers, right? So when we get there and, and everyone's knowing that we can trust each other on the defensive side, the on the attacking side, you know, we have the quality to be there. Is there one part of your body you don't have tattooed or you're scared to get tattooed? <laughs> uh, my legs, my, my lower legs have been, they've hurt a little too much. So I'm like holding off on that. Is that what the shin part? Is that the most painful? Because everyone says yeah. it's just straight bone after the skin. The, the shin and the, and the calf, yeah, it's pretty painful. <laughs> <laughs> More painful than the neck? No, I, to be honest, that's what I get a lot, but it, ha it wasn't that painful. And I also have, like, on the back of the neck, and I even have one, like, on the head right here, but it wasn't even that painful. It's kind of, it's weird. It's definitely weird because the legs are more painful. If we paid for it, would you get a Golasso Network tattoo? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <definitely not>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried. I tried, dude. Wise decision, Diego. Do you have a favorite tattoo? Um, I have one with my mo mom's name. Of course, that's always going to be a favorite. And I have one with my goddaughters with birthday. So I think those are two, two of my favorite, of course, easy ones. But and then I have one on my forearm that's a... Uh, a little okay. bigger. Oh, let's I see. Can show that has like a Ooh. soccer and, and crown and sword and everything. It just has a lot of meanings to it and stuff. So. Oh, I love yeah. that. Oh, that's clean. So yeah. we we heard that um, you were going to be a father in September. So I'm. Are you going to get a tattoo for your babies? Are you going to get your baby's name somewhere? Do you have a special spot picked out? Well, my my whole back is for. So. Or maybe do it a bit soon later on, or maybe far later. Yeah, my whole back is Nice. Wow. Congrats, man. Congrats. 
Thank we you love very that. Much. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Bef before we let you go, we've um, we, we can't stop talking about Lionel Messi on on this show yeah. and uh, just kind of how incredible it is to watch him playing in in Major League Soccer as a player. What's it been like watching him and how excited are you to eventually take the pitch one day and face him? No, yeah, I was I was laughing in that uh, game against Atlanta. I think it's just it's it's just so cool, but also so. It, I think it's laughs of uh, just like enjoyment, and just like how happy it is to see you know the best player to ever do it now playing in our league and to have a chance to play against him. You know, in the Open Cup, if we both win in the semis, we can host them at home, and that'd be in, you know probably the like, the best time of my life. So I think it's <laughs> it's definitely fun, and, and it'd be an awesome thing and hopefully to play him sooner or later to, so I can say we beat Messi. There you go. I love that confidence. Yeah. Also, are, are you going to get the, his jersey? How fast are you going to run up to him post game if that happens? <laughs> if you guys face off, you got you to gotta get that jersey yeah. swap, man. Behind the other 20 guys, even his own teammates. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, we're uh, we're hoping for, that would be an amazing final, by the way, which you can watch yeah. on the Galazzo Network. Yes. P.S. Uh, yeah. Diego Luna, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. We uh, are always, always rooting for you, and best of luck the rest of the season, man. Awesome. Thank you for having me, and I appreciate it, guys. Thank Safe you. travels. Thank you, Diego.